Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and several other topics related to environment and research methodology on my channel. In this session, we are going to talk about Human Development Index. So what is this index all about? What is this quantification of human development that has been attempted and how does it generalize the levels of development throughout the globe and also India? Let's learn about it. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about human development index. Now first thing that where this concept came from is important. So Pakistani economist Mahboob ul Haq created this HDI in 1990 which was further used to measure the country's development by UNDP United Nations Development Program. Now remember UNDP is the organization which is important when we are talking about this particular index. So Physical quality of life, what we say is PQLI, was a composite index that was developed by Morris in 1979. So this was in 1970s when the indexing was important in terms of development, especially human development or quality of life was supposed to be developed in an index manner in applying the quantitative technique. So basic idea was to actually quantify the developmental process and try to measure it. So human development index is one of the measures of economic development as well as human development. Many times we use this interchangeably, right? So the PQLI index, which was developed in 1979, had lots of problems. This index was considered inadequate and it did not cover important aspects of development and did not measure the total welfare either. So in 1979, when this was PQLI was given, it was inadequate, so there was a need for further development or advancement in the indexing factor. The need was of a measuring scale which could measure the entire world in terms of some common parameters, right? So human development index was created by Mahbub ul Haq and others like M. Desai and A. Saint together and it was brought to the center as a measurement of development discourse with the idea of measuring development across the world, right? So what we find here that HDI was created to emphasize that people and their capabilities should be ultimate criteria for assessing the development of a country, right? And not just economic growth alone. So the idea was that if we say economic growth is the absolute measure of economic development, it does not happen. So we need to incorporate other factors as well. So this statistical composite index was advanced form of indexing method that was developed after PQLI, that is physical quality of life index was developed in 1979. So in 1990, when this HDI came up, what was the attribute? What were the main factors? Let's learn about it. So HDI, what we say is human development index is a statistical composite index now first thing it is statistical so when something is statistical what comes to our mind first it comes that it should be in numbers it should be in either percentages it should say it should be greater lower very high very low something like that right so whenever we study statistics it always gives us a tool for decision making right so statistics has been used as a branch of mathematics which is directly applied for decision making right for example the process of sampling and on the basis of sampling we create several studies and try to apply the result to the whole isn't it that's one kind of system of approach of solving problem in the society or in the economy or in other sectors so this is something what we say is statistical parameter so when we are talking about statistics which is essentially a decision making tool and in that a composite index related to development it is of great importance why because it signifies lot about the development of a country or of a region of entire world so life expectancy was one attribute or one factor education Basically, the years of schooling that was completed and expected years of schooling upon entering the education system. These were the two parts of education that we need to remember was the second parameter or factor. And third one is per capita income indicators, right? That is how much income per head is there in that particular country or state wherever we are calculating HDI. So which is used 
to rank the countries into four tiers of human development right so is it at a very high level or high level or medium level or low level right so we need to understand that where hdi is concerned it's essentially about talking in terms of development in terms of index in terms of numbers or in terms of kind of absoluteness we say right so a country scores higher hdi in which cases these are the three cases this can be asked as a multiple choice question as well right so the lifespan is higher the education level is higher and gni the gross national income that is ppp based on purchasing power parity or per capita is higher in a country right if these things are higher obviously hdi will rank high right and higher hdi signifies what a country's development is at a bigger or a greater level so hdi can be used as one parameter it also has several demerits that we are going to look but definitely hdi can be one parameter that can give you some sense of relative development between comparison between two countries right so if you want to compare the developmental levels of the world's western countries the middle eastern countries the southeast asian countries and we put them together in the table one benchmark should be hdi or it could be hdi on the basis of which you can try and understand or group those countries isn't it so it's one of the important statistical decision making tool that we can understand for now so now let's understand hdi furthermore in detail so hdi is what it is the geometric mean now first of all this is what a statistical tool which is essentially important for decision making for understanding of world economic levels for human development levels right but it is calculated through this statistical technique of mean calculation basically not arithmetic but geometric mean right so if you don't know about geometric mean you can learn from other sources because we are not discussing this geometric mean here just to understand that geometric mean is the basis of calculation here of normalized indices for each of the three dimensions now what are the three dimensions that we learned in the previous slide it is about the three factors that we talked right so the three factors what we learned here is this particular factor that is life expectancy education and per capita income indicators right so if you observe the education component of hdi is measured by mean of years of schooling for adult age 25 years and more and expected years of schooling for children of school entering age now this is very interesting that it's education it's not subjective it has been tried to make a very objective idea of education that is on the basis of years of schooling for adults up till 25 years of age and for children who are just entering the school right so school entering age that is the range which is considered here so expected years of schooling is also something which is very interesting that we need to understand how many years would that child be getting education in the school right then mean is calculated of the years of schooling right and this is estimated by the organization that is unesco institute for statistics right based on educational attainment data from censuses and surveys available in its database then expected years of schooling is estimated on the basis of enrollment now remember this enrollment ratio is also important in that way so expected years of schooling are capped at 18 years okay so this is how objectivity has been tried to create so that a measure can be developed then indicators are normalized using minimum value of 0 and maximum aspirational value of 15 mean years of schooling right so normalization is creating a range and fitting the data in that particular range so that you don't have extreme data right some data of 45 and some data of minus or something extreme data so when we normalize we create a range under which we fit the data this is the method of doing it right so the two indices are combined upon into an education index using arithmetic mean right and then standards of living dimension is measured by gross national income per capita right that's important here and Further, the scores for the three HDI dimension indices are then aggregated into a composite index, finally using geometric mean, right? That's really important. And then when the value comes, then the range of this particular value is given and divided into several classes. So then you have classification of countries based on the final geometric mean values of these particular indicators so accordingly what we observe the four types very high human development is 0.9 and above 
right high is human development between 8 and 9 that is 0 0.8 to 0 0.89 right then medium is from 0 0.5 to 0 0.79 and low human development is below 5 that is below 0 0.5 why this 0 0.5 because 0 and 1 is the factor when we normalize values the index comes between 0 to 1 right so if we take scale of 0 to 1 close to 1 is the perfection it means highly developed and as you go close to the 0 right then it means low development that's how it is so less than 5 is very low development if you observe and then you have medium between 0 0.5 to 0 0.79 and then from 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 is high and 0 0.9 and above is very high human development index now understand if we say that one country called Norway is having very high human development index it automatically tells us what there all the three indicators are in a very good shape it means that life expectancy per capita income as well as the years of schooling the education levels all of them are very healthy in that country that is how you can try and interpret yourself right further what we say is the criticism of hdi now remember this is also a quantitative technique and it also has very much limitations that we say right so hdi does not reflect some things like inequalities poverty human security empowerment peace etc so these things are not part of HDI. It means what? HDI is not the absolute measure of economic development or human development, right? So it means it has its own limitation. It does not say anything about inequality, poverty, human security, you know, human threat, threat perception, empowerment and all those values that we say. And the next point is that it has been criticized for curtailing income above a selected threshold value. So what happens when we limit the value, when we limit the range in the data series, what happens? The nearby data that is relatively close to what we are there in the range that is also left out. So that is also one problem that relatively high income adequately for those countries have been not considered, right? Then it does not allow us to judge the relative importance of its different components. For example, countries index change over time is due to change in GNP, what we say is gross national product per capita or because of change adult literacy right so which factor is changing because of which the country's development is changing it's not giving us a clear picture right then this does not seem to be in line with the proposition that higher income would widen people's choice isn't it so this is not saying anything about this particular statement that if higher income is there there will be a diversity in the choice of people isn't it so principle of diminishing return can also be applicable to other components of the index now remember this diminishing return is that after a certain height is achieved there is again a downtrend after this high point this is what we say is principle of diminishing return and this can be also applied to the components of this index, isn't it? Which has not been taken into consideration that these three parameters after going to a height can also start to degrade and which is not part of this calculation or not has been talked as an essential part of this HDI, right? So these are certain limitations that we need to understand. And finally, what we look into is the latest report called Human Development Index Report of 2020 and HDI 2020 report by UNDP United Nations Development Program was released on 15th December 2020 and it calculates HDI values based on the data collected in which year 2019 right so what you observe this is the top 10 here so top 10 countries on the basis of HDI first one is Norway then you have Ireland then Switzerland Hong Kong and then Iceland Germany Sweden Australia Netherlands and Denmark now observe one more thing what you observe here Norway, Ireland, then you have Iceland, then you have Sweden, Netherlands, Denmark. Most of the countries are part of Scandinavian countries, right? Northern Atlantic countries, which have lower population base, isn't it? So what happens when we calculate an index, the area of the country, the population of the country, the infrastructure of the country and several other qualities, for example, the distribution of wealth per head, these things make that country automatically in higher levels right but for a country like india or for the country like china which has a huge population base it's very difficult to match up these small 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 countries so this is also one type of criticism that hdi index 
is good for understanding an objective viewpoint of the world's development or human development across the world right but it is not an absolute indicator we need more and more measures and we need more indicators and also the qualitative indicators not just quantitative indicators if you want to look at the real picture of human development across the world so if you observe 131 is india's rank out of 189 countries in the last report and the value that is calculated for 2019 was 0.645 right so what did you learn it is basically a little above the underdeveloped countries and a little below the basically high developed countries right so india has been positioned at 131 and out of 189 countries according to this particular report so summary of this report if you want norway ranked the first among the neighboring countries of india bhutan was ranked 129 which is better than india followed by Bangladesh at 133, Nepal at 142 and Pakistan at 154. So in neighboring countries in India, if you compare, only Bhutan is ranked higher than India. That's important. Then Singapore was ranked 11, Saudi 40, Malaysia 62 in the global index. It means what? It represents the top bracket amongst Asian countries. So amongst Asian countries, Singapore is the highest rank holder in HDI. That is very high human development index. And then Sri Lanka is on 72, Thailand is on 79, China on 85, Indonesia and Philippines both 107, Vietnam 117 amongst the higher groups in Asia in terms of human development countries. That's important summary. And the report also mentions one thing that no country country could achieve high levels of development without overfilling on natural resources this is one concern that it also raises that remember whichever country you see in the top charts is obviously using natural resources also at the same levels that's important so just imagine a situation at the end of this lecture which i'm trying to tell you is that if we also consume the same levels of natural resources as they consume per capita in these top 10 countries of the world on HDI scale, all our natural resources will be executed, depleted in just few days because we have such a huge population, isn't it? So slow is one thing that should be happening and gradual is one thing that should be happening. It means sustainable development is the course of action that countries like India and others who have huge population base to cater to needs to consider. So not just HDI value but also the quality of life that is also important, happiness that is also important. About these factors we'll be talking separately when we do lectures on economic geography in the, the measures of development. So now when we have learned about human development index, its parameters, its criticism, in the sessions to come, we will be also learning several other aspects of economic geography and other portions of geography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning and don't forget to share the videos with others as well.